Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Philip Lung, and I'm responsible for business development at Samsung. In this session, we will talk about the Galaxy Fi network and introduce the SmartThings Fine partnership program. We will also talk about the tools that will help you build offline finding into your device. It all started a few years ago when we saw a customer testimony. It says, aside from losing my child momentarily at the supermarket, I've never been more scared recently than that time when I thought I lost my phone. That was so powerful that we took it as an inspiration. We wanted to make finding your lost phone just a bit less stressful. So we built the Galaxy Find Network and SmartThings Find so the Galaxy community can help each other out. Galaxy Find Network is a network of Galaxy users who signed up to help each other by finding lost device. They receive a signal from lost device and sending the location anonymously to the SmartThings server. And SmartThings Find, it's the app interface to use for finding device. After registrations, users will see their device listed on the SmartThings Find service card. When a device is missing, you can simply mark the device as lost, and the Galaxy Find Network will help you find it. You'll be notified with the device location when it's been found. It's that easy. And the best part is that it works even when the device is offline. Now, in building a finding network, there is this concept of critical mass. This means having sufficient coverage in a geographical area to find something. Our network is extensive, and it continues to grow every day. We're proud to tell you there are over 100 million Galaxy users participating in the Galaxy Find network across the world. This gives us the critical mass that is needed for finding your lost device. The network is helping Galaxy users to keep track of their Galaxy phones, tablets, earbuds, watches, and even the Galaxy Book PC. But our lives consist of more than just smart device. Our customer research told us that the average person misplaces up to nine objects a day. That includes 1.5 million bikes that are stolen each year, just in the US. And what's worse, only 2% of lost cats get to meet their owners again. So if you're like the average person, in your lifetime, you would have spent a year looking for lost or misplaced items. That is a year of being irritated and frustrated. That's why this year, we introduced the Galaxy Smart Tech and Smart Tech Plus for those who simply want to make their life smarter. The Smart Tech Plus is different in coming with ultra wideband and AR finding technology, which makes it even easier to track that lost item down. Our customers are loving their smart tags. A majority of people are tagging the keys, both home keys and car keys, as well as their cars, their pets, and now that we started going to places again, their bags. We truly believe that we have built something special here. With the Galaxy Find Network, SmartThings Find, and our own Galaxy Smart Tags, we set out to explore whether we can make our users' lives a little bit smarter. The result was overwhelmingly positive. Month over month, our network continues to grow quickly, and we're seeing an upward trend in the number of Galaxy users who own multiple smart techs. Now we are ready to invite our developer partners to join us in the SmartThings Find partnership program. This program lets you put the power of Galaxy Find network into your products. Once the simple integration is done, Galaxy users will be able to view the status of your device in SmartThings Find and leverage the Galaxy Find network to find it. Our first partners have given this a go already, and they were able to build a test device within days. Later this year, SoluM will be releasing the SoluM SmartTech. It's a small battery power IoT tracker that you can use to keep track of your belongings, from wallet to backpack and even your love pads. Our other partner, FacePro, will be releasing the Yelp Smart Tech this holiday season. Users can engrave their personal information on this tracker via in-store kiosks in over 1,500 PetSmart locations across North America. So if you're building any device that could be lost or misplaced, 
we would love for you to join Smart Things Fine. Now let me hand it over to Muhan, and he will walk you through how easy it is to build with Smart Things. Hi, my name is Muhan Shin. I'm a software engineer responsible for Smart Things device connection protocol at Samsung. Some of our developer partners may already be familiar with the works with the Smart Things certification program, which is designed for both hardware and service providers. Historically, we supported three different protocol types, hub-connected devices like Zigbee, directly connected devices which connect to the SmartThings cloud without a hub, and cloud-connected devices. Now, we are happy to announce that we'll be expanding the scope of works with SmartThings program to include devices that are connected to mobiles. This is the protocol type that you will want to use your device when building for SmartThings Find. Before jumping into talking about how to build and certify your SmartThings Find device, I would like to share with you our key design principles in building the SmartThings Find partnership program. They are privacy and security, device complexity, and partner value. Privacy and security of the user has been our number one concern from the start. When a device is advertising and transmitting BLE signal, by nature, there could be privacy concerns. So we designed a mechanism where BLE packets change every 15 minutes, and your device never transmits the same packets again. SmartThings Find service provides end-to-end encryption. Your device simply needs to set an end-to-end -end encryption flag in BLE advertising packet, and the mobile will encrypt the device's location. We were also focused on building something that is simple for our partners to build. For end-to-end -end encryption, just a one-bit flag in BLE advertisement packet is all your device has to do. Your device can even trigger SmartThings automation by simply sending the guard indication to the mobile. Our SmartThings platform will do the rest. And our SDK allows you to further reduce your development efforts by providing an easy implementation of the SmartThings Fine device specifications. Lastly, our program was designed to maximize the value that our partners receive. Here is one of the great examples regarding how we think about our partners' value. You can customize the device onboarding experience in SmartThings. This is done by uploading your own product images and brand name that match your device ID. And you can even include troubleshooting guide for your device in the SmartThings onboarding process. Let's say you, our developer partner, have decided to build a SmartThings Find device. Next, I'll explain how the core concept of the SmartThings Find device specification. This concept will be important for you to understand so you can apply them to your device. Let's start with onboarding and management. Your tag will need to be registered to the SmartThings cloud before the end user can locate it and manage it inside the SmartThings app. This onboarding process is initiated by the end user, who will go inside the SmartThings mobile app and add the tag as a new device. Once the tag is registered to the SmartThings cloud, it is associated with the end user Samsung account. The end user can then find and control it through the SmartThings app using any Galaxy phone, tablet, or a PC that is associated with the same Samsung account. The second core concept that is relevant to your device is offline finding. The offline finding feature enables the Galaxy Find network to report the location of your device if it is lost. To enable this, your device will broadcast a randomly changing privacy ID, which will be used to identify real device identity. The location of the device will be filled by the Galaxy Find network, not by the device directly. The third concept relates to the state that the device should be in. For the device to work, it should be transitioned and operate between five different states. Out of box, connected, pretty much offline, offline, and over much offline. Your SmartThings Find device will start off in out of box state. Once the user completes onboarding, your device goes to the connected state. When the device is disconnected, the device waits for the connection to recover. After 15 minutes, 
it switches to offline state, and the Galaxy Find network will be activated to report the location of the device. After a long period of disconnection, your device should go into a more mature offline state. In that state, privacy ID changes slowly so that SmartThings Find service can detect any unwanted tracking activities. Now that I have explained our design principles and the core concept, I'll talk about the device development process. Before you start developing with SDK, you need to create a project in the developer workspace. Once you have completed your self-test with SmartThings Find test suite, you are ready to request certification. I'll guide you through these steps one by one. Let's start with the developer workspace. You can find the URL here on the screen. Developer workspace provides easy to use tools for integrating your devices with the SmartThings platform. Once you are in the workspace, Project View displays a list of all devices you have created. Click the new project button to create a new project for device integration. Make sure you choose mobile connected device if you are building for SmartThings Find. For development, you can choose to deploy the SDK that we have built. This is by far the easiest way to implement the SmartThings Find device specifications. This SDK supports major build chipsets from Nordic, Dialog, and NXP. And we are continuously adding more chipsets. We have also provided an intuitive porting layer just in case your device chipset is not supported yet. Your device application simply needs to call three APIs since we provide the core logic. Here is a sample application. As you can see, it is calling device init API, and then device start API is being called in a newly created main task. Once the start API is called, BLE got database and services are created and your device will start BLE advertising. The device cleanup API will be called when the device is being listed to the factory default. Anytime during your development, and also after you comp have completed development, you can use the SmartThings Find test suite to finalize your product development cycle. The test suite covers a wide range of device behavior, starting from onboarding to UWB, Almost 90% of specification can be tested, and around 95% of possible fail cases can be detected. This is also the easiest way to report test results for works with SmartThings certification. Lastly, once you have completed the development and self-test, you can then request for certification of your device. Certification gives you with the right to you the works with SmartThings badge on your device packaging and marketing, informing customers that your products are compatible across the entire SmartThings ecosystem. After certification, your device will be ready to be published. To publish, simply go back into Developer Workspace, find the Publish menu in your Developer Workspace project, and click Publish Request. The product is now all ready to be shipped to the market. Time to wrap up. Visit us at smartthings.com slash partners and click get in touch. Don't forget to specify the partnership type to be mobile connected. We'll then provide support on specification, SDK, test suite, and all of our other questions. Thank you for watching.